Well, thank you, uh, Ranking Member Peters. And uh, again, uh, Mr. Acting Secretary, thank you for uh, spending a long morning with us. We sure. appreciate it very much. Um, I want to follow up. I have two questions. They're both follow-ups, really, in a way, to, to <laughs> others. Uh, Senator Portman talked about our ongoing battle uh, about opioids generally, but fentanyl in particular. Last Congress we passed and the President signed into law the Interdict Act, which provides more technology for border agents to detect fentanyl at the border. When I was at the border last year, I heard that agents still didn't have access to this equipment. Former Secretary Nielsen stated that it was unacceptable when she testified before this committee last May. Can you provide an update to the committee on the status of implementing the Interdict Act? So I, I believe we've, inter, we've implemented the Interdict Act at the highest traffic locations for concerns for fentanyl or synthetic opioids, and we've dramatically increased our testing capability uh, across the board. That doesn't mean we have it everywhere we need it or in every port of entry. Uh, the investments in FY19, which we're currently right. procuring and deploying, will help augment that. Uh, but absolutely, we'll look at our, our laydown and make sure it's comprehensive uh, and supports uh, this critical mission area. So are, are all the FY19 then funds, have they been spent? Not yet. Not no, yet. they're currently in the, in the planning and deployment phase. And are all the machines that you have operational at this time? In, any new machines that were purchased under the Interdict Act, right. unless there's an, a maintenance issue, uh, yes, they're operational. Okay. Um, what still needs to be done? Just expanding them to other sites? Correct. Okay. Yeah, no, we, we, we deploy on a risk-based, prioritized uh, basis. So that'll be the mail facilities, express consignment, the major right. southwest border ports of entry, and then we try to get to the rest of the key areas. Okay. And so do you have the funding that you need to do that? I believe so. I'll report back to you if we're missing resources. All right, please, please do. We'd love to stay up to, up to date on that with you. Um, I also wanted to follow up on the issue of domestic terrorism. Uh, I greatly appreciate uh, the attention uh, of DHS and my colleagues on um, fighting domestic terrorism against houses of worship and faith-based groups. Uh, as Senator um, Peters just mentioned, uh, like him, Senator Grassley and I have also uh, sent your agency a letter expressing concern over the rise of domestic terrorism and requesting more information on what DHS is doing to prevent and mitigate this threat to ensure public safety. I, I want to ask you just a series of questions to get a better sense of the resources that the department has dedicated to combating domestic terrorism. And since we've got limited time, let's see if we can do a lightning round. Do you, I take it that you agree that domestic non-foreign terrorist organization inspired terrorism is on the rise as stated in this administration's national strategy for counterterrorism? Yes. Given the emphasis of domestic terrorism in this national strategy, does DHS have a 2019 strategy specifically addressing the rise in domestic terrorism threats? So we're working on a formal strategy, but we do have that as a priority operational effort right. already. And as you work on that formal strategy, once you get it done, uh, I take it you will share it with the committee? Yes. Uh, on a related note, what percentage of the department's budget is specifically dedicated to addressing domestic terrorism, and how does it, that amount compare to previous years? I don't have that information here, but we can get back to you on that. Do you know how many, and thank you, I, I would love it if you'd get back to us on that. How many intelligence analysts at DHS headquarters tasked with the primary responsibility of covering domestic terrorism are there? I'll get back to you on that as well, but what I can tell you is that under Undersecretary Glawi, he's forward deployed a number of the intel analysts to work directly embedded with state and locals around the country, not only in our fusion centers, but in key sheriffs and police departments around the country, and that's one of their focus areas. And, and I'll ask a similar uh, update uh, about how many policy and program staff you have exclusively focusing on domestic terrorism. Okay. Um, I, I shared the concern that it is on the rise here. Um, I have been concerned that resources that once were devoted to domestic terrorism have been taken and used other places. And it's one thing to say we care about it and are committed to it, which I believe and I, I understand. It's another thing to have the resources personnel focused to do it. So I'll look forward to that update from you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.